Hey guys, today we are talking about the full moon in Cancer that is happening the day after Christmas this year. This is a time of fertility, growth, and abundance, you guys. This is a very... We need to be skeptical, okay? That's what I feel like I need to say opening this report. Um, you know, this energy, it, I looked at it for a while. I spent some time with it this morning, trying to really get a flow for how the energy is working, how the energy is operating coming into our Cancer full moon cycle. And it like, after a little bit of time, I was realizing like, yes, this energy looks great. Like things appear to be going very, very well. It appears to definitely be a time of like fertility and growth and abundance, like the wind in our sails, things should be working in our favor, expansion, like optimism, hope, like good fortune, everything along those lines, everything seeming to go well. But then I just get this vibe, like this like a side eye situation, you know, like making me sort of like mm, raise a bit of an eyebrow. Uh, I just feel skeptical and I feel like I need to proceed with caution. You know what I mean? When I'm looking at this chart and uh, like all of that being said, I do think that we are headed for a period of some very positive in production productive expansion and growth. However, we do need to, you know, like I said, approach everything with an air of skepticism and I feel like that we should really use the abundance and you know the resources or you know the positive financial circumstances and stuff like that that are going on right now in a way that is doing something to like secure our situation somehow um building security okay securing foundations like this to me is the most positive and productive way that we can use this energy as it's coming together right now, even though there might be a desire to sort of be a bit extravagant, you know, be a bit indulgent. And we really may feel like we have this grand vision that we're able to like step into and pursue and things seem to be moving along those lines. There is definitely, despite the grandiosity and like the positivity of the time right now uh at least this is the way that it seems to be coming through in the context of this chart there is an aspect of this that is likely to like at some point in the future turn out to have been uh quite like inflated quite illusory like quite even like imaginary or just like not real okay on some level so all of that being said it is great energy that we have coming together for this full moon cycle. Uh, the full moon is in a trine with Jupiter. We've got a lot of Sagittarius energy. Mars and Mercury are together. This, you know, can bring a more conflict-oriented time. But Venus is also in a beautiful trine with Neptune. This is like generosity and compassion and empathy. And the, the Mars-Mercury energy, this could just be accelerating things, especially happening, you know, in a trine to the North Node, something that we're going to be talking about there is a lot of energy and aspects and transits happening that are indicating like positive productive growth in a good direction we should be feeling kind of on top of our game like i said sort of like the wind in our sails things working in our favor like opportunities things falling into place but there is just this element of something that i don't trust about this chart for some reason <laughs> And I, I'll tell you guys, it's not just for some reason, you know, it's the Neptune element, some of the symbolism coming through as well. I just don't necessarily trust that there is a huge, tremendous level of security in the growth that is happening at this point in time. If you guys watched my solstice reading from the other day, I was talking about how just the way that things seem to be presenting, the, the patterning that I was noticing... It seems like, yes, we are definitely accelerating towards a phase of growth right now, but I feel like there's like phases or chapters or steps to the progress before the real true growth can like go through this definite like definitely expressed phase of expansion. Um, you know, and even perhaps like for uh, separate like processes of initiation or tests maybe that we need to go through or something like that side note put that off to the side but you know as this is coming through like this it is definitely 
any astrologer looking at this chart is going to be like, this looks like a good time. This looks like everybody's sort of riding high, you know, things are going well, expansion, growth, fertility, like very strong creative potential, uh, inspiration, okay, like all the Jupiter, Jupiterian everything, hope, optimism, belief, faith, confidence, okay. But then there is this very Neptunian element of things that we're going to talk about as well that I, it's just like, things are just not as they seem somehow, or the way that we are perceiving them is like clouded in some way. I don't know. All right. So number one, you know what I want to say, don't be fooled by false pretenses and inflated values as we move through the next couple of weeks. Things are likely to look very good, very promising. The The future and potential growth is likely to be, you know, right there. You know, you can see it, you can taste it, you can feel it. However, that doesn't necessarily with all of this Neptune energy we have going on as well, make it real. And even if it is real, you know, even if we're looking at it straight in the face there is just a potential for like some level of um projection or just like a uh, illusion somehow that is acting as an overlay across whatever we think we're perceiving in this energy even if we actually are it's weird like honestly you know as I said, sitting with this energy before doing this video, preparing for this video, it 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 does feel like a it's it's just weird because, you know, it's presenting one thing, but then it's not. Okay, so let's get into it. You know, that's what it feels like. That's what I feel like is going on. Um, major gains, growth, almost like aggressive momentum, okay? But then something about it just not being what it seems. Things going really well, things growing really well, but then like indications of perhaps like some sort of like setup going on. Count your blessings, right? But maybe like don't take the bait, I don't know, uh, over these next couple weeks. Let's get into the chart. And I should say, before I forget, welcome back to my channel, you guys. My name is Aubrey, and on this channel, we are narrating the shift of the ages. Uh, but let's talk about the chart. This is, I mean, one of the best energy charts that you could see for expecting like good things to happen. Spirits are likely to be high. This is definitely indicating an energetic high point as well. Probably in this whole 2023 year, to be honest with you, like we are ending this year in some massively expanded energy in the context, you know, of pretty much where we've been throughout the course of this entire 2023. Like I said, full moons themselves are the energetic high point each month when the sun and the moon come into their exact opposition with each other. And then when we add the Jupiter influence, Jupiter is a planet of growth and expansion. Jupiter is ancient astrology known as a great benefic. Jupiter blesses, brings good fortune. Jupiter is like the Santa Claus planet. So, you know, it's also quite appropriate. This is a very like, um, the the Christmas themes are running strong, okay, with the way that this full moon energy is coming together. The the Christmas spirit, you know, just the spirit of giving, generosity, benevolence, and growth and expansion in a positive direction are being very supported and like literally universally facilitated at this point in time. We're gonna see a lot of things grow over the course of the next couple weeks. And like I said, energy is likely to be very, very high uh, while we move move through this full moon energy. Now, the base data, let's talk about that before I forget that as well. This full moon is happening on December uh, 26th through the 27th. Actually, it's happening at 0034 uh, universal time on the 27th. So just 34 minutes into the new day into 1227 uh, universal time. But that translates to 734 p.m. Eastern time on the 26th is the exact uh, full moon alignment. This is happening at four degrees and 58 minutes of the signs of Cancer and Capricorn, the sun in Capricorn, the moon in Cancer. This is a very very 
feeling oriented lunar cycle. Whenever we have our uh, Cancer full moon every year, Cancer is ruled by the moon. So this is the moon in her home sign. A lot to do with family, a lot to do with community, a lot to do with the home. It also could be very like um, career oriented as well. And also things to do with like government, authority, institutions, like big business or just business generally and stuff um, could be some highlighted themes going on over this next couple of weeks as well. And in terms of the Sabian symbol placement, that means that we're going to be looking at the symbols for five degrees of Cancer and Capricorn in the context of this um, chart. Because when we read the symbolism associated with degree placement, we round up a degree, we look at the wave of energy coming in, not the wave of energy going out. So that is the baseline data that we have going on for the full moon as it's coming together today. Um, and the full moon is almost in an exact trine and sextile to Jupiter. And it's also actually in a trine and a sextile very tight to Saturn. And as I said, we've got lots of Neptune influence going on. We've got Mars and Mercury. We've got Venus, Mercury retrograde, retrograde energy, Neptune energy. So we know with those features of our chart being strong, we're going to need to just sort of like exercise some caution in what we are doing to excess okay as we move through this period of time but it's going to be bringing joy it's going to be bringing blessings good fortune growth expansion and positivity right especially in the realms of as i just mentioned these cancerian capricornian themes home family career business financially a very positive time that we are moving towards i feel like we're going to be feeling good also with this expansive Jupiter influence with the moon uh, in terms of money and resources and financial situations we are likely to see like some booming financial markets come about perhaps some like uh, pretty significant economic growth maybe and with both again the Cancer Capricorn like this being Cancer Capricorn access time with the Sun and the moon full moon Cancer Capricorn and moving towards Capricorn season both like institutions and governments and also like individuals, homes, families should benefit from the increase in like assets or resource or abundance or, you know, productivity or positivity or value. Somehow we're talking about Capricorn. Again, this is like big business, government institutions, career oriented stuff. And then we're talking about cancer. This is the collective energy. This is the home. This is the family. This is the community. And this is the like individual in the context of like the family unit and stuff like that. So with Jupiter forming the trine to the sun in Capricorn, the sextile to the moon in Cancer. This is just likely to benefit like both ends of this spectrum. Things should be looking up, feeling good. This I do feel like is going to be bringing a collective high over this next couple of weeks, okay? People are going to be making plans, making investments, and there could be some very aggressive or fast-paced deals or negotiations happening right now. There could be this like almost like sense of urgency to like communicate, to sign the deal, to sign the contract, to get it done, an acceleration of talks and meetings. And again, like I just keep thinking of this word like aggressive push for information somehow. But again, like there's likely to be some level of this that like does not go according to plan, like requires major adjustments or revisions somehow, or just like doesn't end up translating into the original intention or like the 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 deal that was agreed upon somehow. And this is why, okay. Aside from all of the very expansive, positive, productive Jupiter energy, I've also been talking about the Neptunian influence that we have going on right now. Now, while Jupiter's presence, it's a very harmonious time as well. Like things are just, people are feeling very generous, like I said, like people are in the giving mood, the giving spirit, like nobody really wants to say no. And that might be part of the problem as well. It's like, Nobody wants to be like the bearer of bad news and everybody sort of has this 
like seeing the potential of things, like seeing the bigger vision, like seeing, uh, you know, what it could be, like what could happen. But there's just this definite neglect for the ability to like see the fine print, like see the details, like see, you know, truly, you know, what would need to happen like on the day to day and like how that would realistically play out. There's a huge element of reality that is missing from this chart. Even though we do have the Saturnian trine, which is on some level, like holding us down and like, you know, keeping us <laughs> in like connection or attached to reality, you know, keeping us from becoming like totally ungrounded but Saturn is also in the sign of Pisces and we've got this very strong Neptune square going on um and Saturn also is like consequences and karma um so we we're, we're gonna want to be careful okay let's talk now more about this Neptunian influence right so while we do have as I've stated repeatedly this very strong and benevolent and expansive energy working to bring like growth 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 and it's not just growth 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 as a result of the Jupiterian influence this other aspect that I'm wading into right now with Mercury and Mars and Sagittarius because that's that's what we have we have Mercury and Mars in a conjunction in Sagittarius but Mercury is exactly square Neptune and both of these planets with Mars being the closest are in a trine to the north node now Mars trine north node in Aries Mars's sign this is also growth and acceleration like almost in an uncontrollable way like in a brand new direction this like trajectory towards like blasting off forward towards some like rebirth or in some like new journey somehow okay and then of course the Jupiter energy is also like <laughs> growth without limitation like uncontrolled uh, expansion. So like growth is a major, major theme here. But then we also have, as I said, Mercury, who is also retrograde. And that's another thing that I can't forget to mention. Jupiter is retrograde as well. We got Mercury, we've got Jupiter, and we've got Uranus, all retrograde in the energy. And we've got Chiron stationing direct as this energy comes in. Chiron is also a very financially oriented, uh, a very financially oriented energy activates things along financial lines to happen. It's Chiron stationing. This is going to put an emphasis as well. Things to do with value, things to do with worth, things to do with finances. There's going to be a lot of things happening. I feel like having to do with finances, with value, with economies, with material stuff, like with worth, even like perhaps precious metals and stuff like that as well. Um, but anyways, that's another side note. Stay focused. Okay, so we've got Mercury squaring Neptune exactly in the conjunction to Mars. That is letting me know like the things that we are so amped up to get done, like the sense of urgency, this like fire that's burning under us to like say that thing or have that conversation or sign that deal or make that negotiation. I don't think that we should be so like assertive about that, um, especially if it's not just falling into your lap. Now, as I said, this energy is squaring Neptune, but it's also trining the North Node. So it's like a faded almost, like whatever experience this is driving towards, it is a part of the process of the overall process of growth and like the pursuit of this like new journey or, you know, whatever we talk about the North Node activating in Aries all the time, activating this like latent destiny or this like higher purpose that may have, you know, been dormant within us up until this point in our lives. But now we are realizing we're feeling like called and compelled towards this like mission or this like, you know, this new like experience of life that we've got to do or move towards or something somehow. I don't want to get into all of that right now. But with the uh, the Mercury Mars, like, you know, on one hand, it could be some Mercury Mars also in a square to Neptune. This could also be like busting through illusions. We got to remember Neptune is the illusion. So we're either being caught up in something that is clouding our judgment, clouding our vision and, you know, is going to require some type of correction if we move too quickly towards it or 
like something that we're learning, something that we're discovering, something that we are finding out about is awakening us to something on some level or we're rethinking something in such a way that is destroying some type of an illusion or breaking us free from maybe some type of hypnosis or some type of fantasy that we've been in as well. But we just need to be very careful because again, like things are not as they seem. We have Mercury and Neptune in a square. Like especially, I mean, this is even when if Mercury is direct and we have Mercury square Neptune, this is Mercury retrograde energy. We have Mercury retrograde and Mercury square Neptune, especially also in Sagittarius and Pisces because Pisces is the dream, Pisces is the fantasy, Pisces is the illusion and you know, Sagittarius this is the truth, right? This is like the higher knowledge. And so there's there's a conflict going on between fantasy and reality fact and fiction you know truth and illusion whenever we are dealing with this particular square of these energies Sagittarius and Pisces same you know with Gemini and Virgo also it's funny how all those mutable signs kind of work together like that but our vision is just like even if this is functioning in such a way to like crack us out of some illusion that we've been in there is a good chance that we still don't have the whole context in order to like really understand you know what we're getting involved in or what's going on or what has been going on like there's more that needs to come in order so the whole picture can be revealed to us or so that we can like truly begin to go and grow in this new direction so things are just not what they seem um and we should again like be very, very skeptical of everything. Things are going well. Things are likely to go well. That's why this energy is weird. It's because things are happening, but just because they're happening doesn't mean that they're secure, doesn't mean that they're lasting, okay? And doesn't mean that it's like really, really real. And that probably sounds so weird right now. And I'm sorry if this is like a really confusing report. This is also a Mercury retrograde report. And it's also, you know, very Neptunian energy that we have to talk about. And I apologize if that's coming through in my articulation of the way that I'm trying to express this energy. But you know, when we're dealing with the Neptune, uh, things can be like very spiritual, very divinely inspired, like very in alignment, okay, with some type of like higher knowing, but they can also be very insubstantial, very illusory, like things coming to nothing, nothing like really being as it seems. And I think that like, as we go down the road and as we move through this energy, you know, it'll probably take a couple months <laughs> before, you know, we can look back and see which aspects of things playing out right now were real and which weren't and how these things sort of fit together in this way. Um, but, you know, it just it, it's just looking like we've got this really good stuff going on, but can we trust it? Is it secure? Like, is it real? Is it lasting? Is it like a projection? Like, is it a tool to like move towards something else, but it, you know, it's not meant to last? You know what I mean? Uh, that's kind of where I'm at with, with all of this. And uh, also I don't want to, you know, neglect to put a little, um, you know, emphasis on the Saturnian influence that we have going on right now as well. Saturn's at three Pisces. This full moon is happening at five cancer capricorn so this is also trining and sex styling like i said and can uh saturn is you know control limitation discipline saturn is government saturn is authority in the sign of pisces uh this is also consequences and karma there could be like this makes me think that you know perhaps some of the well this is bosses, higher ups, institutions, right? Like the career, the, the, the workplace authority. This is kind of like bonuses. Okay. This is like big bonuses from your boss, maybe, um, or like very good feedback about your performance. Like on a personal level, I feel like, uh, this Saturnian influence is also supporting our, perhaps like perception that things are booming, that things are blossoming, that things are secure. Okay. But it's also karma. It's also 
consequences of things. Saturn's also like the long term and it's also the past. Um, and it's also, like I said, you know, government and like institutions and stuff. This could be like some type of projection of inflated value coming down from like a financial institution or something that makes things at this period of time seem like they're, you know, more valuable or more abundant than they actually are, you know, causing people to maybe make investments and stuff like that. But like maybe come to find out down the road, there was things that was like much too inflated and like the value really isn't there or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. Like that's the type of scenario that uh, just immediately I think of when I look at the combination of this energy and especially also with the Saturnian influence, they're like stabilizing things. Yes, but like... <sighs> I still don't know that it's the substance of it all is really truly there because we're talking about all this Jupiterian energy, right? And even the Sag, the Mercury, uh, the Mars, like the big time vibes energy, but Jupiter's retrograde and Mercury's retrograde. And yeah, like Merc Jupiter is going to station on the 30th. That is definitely going to add to the notion of the positivity right now. But in this energy, Chiron stationing. Chiron's the wounded healer, teacher, master archetype we got Chiron going on uh like going on um that energy like brings us through the dark night of the soul in order to gain the self-mastery to create true wealth and abundance okay like that energy like triggers wounds in order to like develop wisdom and develop power from experience and ultimately you know Chiron energy this brings us towards self-mastery and helps us to find true value within and create therefore you know true value without around us um but it, it's not necessarily always you know the most easy energy and Chiron's been retrograde for a long time but Chiron the Chiron point where Chiron was discovered a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow Chiron all about alchemy okay the process of as I just said you know transmuting states of victimhood into self-mastery transmuting our lower instinctual nature our base you know nature our egoic nature into our higher selves okay it's the process of internal alchemization and alchemy you know it's all about lead into gold right it's got this very value oriented there could be things with precious metals going on um but you know with Chiron station as well this is talking about values talking about worth it's talking about potential um but it doesn't make me feel like you know everything is just super super solid and we're talking about a cancer moon what are the primary you know concerns of the sign of cancer this is a sign of the mother the home the family it's all about security right it's all about comfort and we've got it in you know the aspect to Jupiter and Taurus the sign of the builder that's why I'm saying like we want to use this energy to build security, to secure foundations, to secure like comfort and uh, resources and stuff like that. We don't want to be super extravagant and just kind of like blow it in this energy, okay? Um, especially as we move more towards the end of the month and we do have Jupiter station and that is going to be whenever a planet stations in the sky, it amplifies the energy of that planet. Jupiter is already a planet of, you know, amplification and expansion. We already are in a full moon cycle with very amplified energy. You know, all the month of December, Jupiter has been the primary planet uh, doing the most, okay? But when we get to the end of the month, this is Jupiter's station, so it's going to be the most prominent Jupiterian energy of the month. Um... So we just want to make sure that we're not getting carried away because that's what Jupiter energy can do, you know, unrestrained, over the top, uh, you know, just over committing, over investing, over indulging. We want to watch out for that. Good things are definitely happening. Uh, big waves are being made. People are definitely riding high. People are going to be feeling good, very optimistic. Uh, this is also, you know, like grandiose there could be like people just feeling very limitless throughout the course of this next couple of weeks but the flip side of that you know what I mean like this over exaggeration this over inflation of things this over idealization of things overstating over promising over committing right and then I don't know finding out perhaps things just are not necessarily 
what we thought they were. Good intention, but little follow through. It's like the appearance of something very big and some like really great possibility, but it's more of like a concept or a vision or, you know, a projection or just like high hopes or something, then, you know, something that maybe can actually functionally turn into all that we hope, wish, or dream that it could be. Uh, definitely Neptune energy has this double potential of yes, very divinely inspired, you know, with the, the Mars North node, Mercury trying as well, like, it is in divine alignment. Like the things that are happening now are in divine alignment, but Mercury's retrograde, Jupiter's retrograde. It's almost like some lesson or some test or some experience that we need to go through in the context of whatever, however these themes are playing out that is like, creating a circumstance that causes us to have to open our eyes to something or change our mind about something or reevaluate our perspective about something before we can actually move forward towards whatever that vision is or whatever we're trying to create or bring into fruition. I don't know, you guys, I, you know, I do think this is a good time to take advantage of the abundance that is indicated. This is indicating, like I said, like booming times, like I expect some type of, you know, increases and in like, uh, like stock markets and stuff like that markets should be like doing really well economies and stuff should be like doing really well. Um, but be careful, you know, just be careful of trusting the circumstances too much. That's just what I keep coming back to. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I was looking at this chart in the beginning. And I'm like, yes, I want to be like, yay, this is like the best full moon ever, you know, sky high on top of the world. Like, yay, have a great time. And I do feel like that. And I do mean to communicate that. But I just think that we need to be skeptical. We shouldn't be overly trusting of anything, you know, circumstances, people, relationships, agreements, pitches, even what we think that we are seeing, you know, in front of our face. Um, something just feels slightly dishonest about the way that this chart is presenting. Symbolism, I will say, is also indicating this. We have uh, the moon, the full moon at five degrees of cancer. Actually, as I said, it's at four degrees and 58 minutes exactly. That's where the full moon is happening. But in terms of the Sabian symbol placement, we round up a degree. So we're going to be looking at five degrees of cancer. This is one of the degrees and all the Sabian symbols that to me is just not one of my favorites. Um, this the symbol for five cancer is um, at a railroad crossing. An automobile is wrecked by a train. Okay. So I mean, don't be alarmed, right? You know, this is not fear. We don't fear any of this stuff. We actually always trust in, you know, God's spirit universe, the higher plan that's unfolding. And we always know just because this may seem like a more, you know, like just a less surface level positive, uh, symbol where this energy is taking place. Um, I don't think that, you know, it never benefits us to view things in like a catastrophic way. Okay. We are in a time, I mean, we've got Pluto at 30 Capricorn. Pluto's about to move into Aquarius. We're transitioning to the age of Aquarius. This is going to be a time, all right, of destruction and creation that are happening simultaneously. Um, so we've got to be prepared for that. And we've also got to understand that a lot of times the best thing that can happen actually seems like the worst thing that can happen because we we can't you know we don't have the future perspective to understand how that's helping us or why that is necessary or what that's going to lead to and um you know, as we are transitioning ages right now and heading into the age of Aquarius, we're being released from a paradigm of the past and uh, you know, we've been, a lot of us have been very, very rooted in that world for a long period of time. And like the breakdown of that world, as we move into this new energy and, you know, the new reality that is going to be a representation of that might feel a lot more like a, a death and a destructive, you know, force as it's happening, man, you know, a positive creative force. And we got to keep that in mind as well. Um, but destruction, you know, actually as we move forward over this next several years is again like working for our benefit at the end of the day so that's my whole disclaimer okay on this particular symbol but um I mean 
in the uh, when we when we look at this being the placement the symbolic placement of the full moon again what I'm talking about yes this like very positive expansive especially financially oriented um you know energy or you know just generally we want to be careful because it is also you know with this being a symbol perhaps a setup for maybe like some type of crash and you know maybe just totally accidentally or maybe it was staged that way we don't know but the position of the sun also obviously in the opposition to the position of the moon that sabian symbol is native americans some rowing a canoe others dancing a war dance in it the war dance makes me think of this mars mercury energy that we have in the square to uh in the square to neptune and it's like again like in the canoe right some rowing a canoe some dancing the war dance in it like we're moving towards something or we're preparing to move towards something or we're motivated to engage in something and you know the war dance right maybe be aggressively but we just want to be cautious again we're talking about you know a vehicle in motion right moving somewhere going somewhere think we got a plan think we're going to get something done pretty motivated to do so maybe and again that like more like aggressive way fast-paced way needing to get it done why to get it done but then we've got the the railroad crossing and the automobile wrecked by the train so maybe some type of like abrupt stop or pause or just a need to exercise excess caution that's all i'm saying you guys and i really like i don't mean to be you know raining on parades i don't mean to be out here sounding you know all pessimistic and stuff i generally try not to do that because i feel like the uh you know i feel like our mental frame and our mindset determines a lot in the context of how we interface with um the energies and the experiences and I just think that you know this is indicating symbolically that there is a need to be cautious don't you know don't push don't jump into things if things are not falling into place for you right now don't don't force things to happen okay and don't be fooled also don't just buy what anybody out there is selling uh live the high yes take advantage of the good times absolutely but just don't overestimate right the security of this situation and that again is really what i feel like this is kind of coming down to or the wisdom of this time maybe is pointing towards this this false sense of security really is what I'm picking up on and I think that's what's making me give the chart just a side eye a little bit like mm, yeah you look really nice you smell really good uh, like you're packaged very very well um normally i would expect this to be what it is however it's just the neptune with the mercury and the mars and venus also in almost an exact trying to neptune i haven't really talked about that that much but venus is also what like finances and you know assets resources venus is ruling the position right now of jupiter and taurus as well and also the position of of uranus and in, in the trine to neptune also this is like way over idealizing things this is like rose colored glasses to an extreme it is a very like creative divinely aligned divine inspiration type of energy but you know and it brings lovely experiences it's just not all that realistic okay so um it's like it's real but it's not it's real now but in the future it may not be it's kind of just how i'm feeling use this time to build security that is the absolute best use of this energy here secure foundations with the excess resources that are available now invest in security not extravagance self-discipline with the saturn trine this is also going to pay off for us remember saturn is consequences saturn is karma it's like i feel i keep feeling like the like the grasshopper and the ant you know that story type of vibe right now too it's like you've got all this harvest right now and what are you gonna do with it are you just gonna like squander it away and like blow it or are you gonna like pack it away you know invest it wisely and like keep it for a rainy day type of thing you know what I mean um so use resources use abundance for practical real life things that enhance productivity and efficiency and security and comfort try not to get caught in the illusions of grandeur and the world of splendor even though uh it's probably going to be hard to stay out of the fantasy land and just 
you know, the endless and limitless possibilities that we feel like are just at the tips of our fingers and just on the brink of like manifesting and coming to our lives in this energy. Um, again, like it's realize a lot of what seems to be happening right now may not be even if it seems like it is like it makes me think sort of of kind of like the experience of watching like a movie or a show, right? It's like it's really happening. Like that, that show is really happening right in front of you, you know, you're witnessing it, you can see it in front of your eyes. But is it actually happening? No, it's not actually happening. It's happening. There is a show being put on, but that scenario, that circumstance, like that's not actually real. Like that's not actually what's happening because it's not real life and it's not real individuals and like a legitimate situation. Like it's, it's, it's not real. It's a imitation scenario. Like it's a fabricated scenario that we are perceiving and connecting with is real as real in that moment because we know we're engaging in a show. But if we don't necessarily know that we're participating in a show, you know what I mean? There could be a tendency to perceive that which is not as that which is. <laughs> and that I feel like is just kind of the vibe I'm getting from this energy. So again, I apologize if this has been a confusing report. <laughs> but I just feel like, you know, this this moon energy, this Cancer moon energy is probably going to make more sense in the long term when we do gain the additional perspective and we do sort of see maybe how this spike in things generally has played out um long term so that's what I'm gonna say for today you guys um good times yes abundance yes positive things yes growth yes but we got lots of retrograde energy corrections revisions things not exactly as they appear and just be very careful getting like swindled or fooled or you know with all of the overs over investing over committing over even like over indulging you know over spending uh we want to self-discipline ourselves to the best of our ability and use the resources for saturn right practical uh functional productive stabilizing securing comfort going forward okay so that's what i'm gonna say about that let's get a synchronicity card now one more piece of advice or guidance from god spirit universe what should we know what should we keep in mind what would benefit us also to sort of use as a mantra over this next couple of weeks you are protected Exactly. And again, like, we don't need to fear. This is a very, very creative period of time. And things are working according to a higher plan. You are protected. Have no worry. Have no fear. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Psalms 91 11. Know your guardian angel is with you always protecting you from harm. Be assured he keeps you safe when fear overwhelms you. Read the 91st Psalm in its entirety and rest assured or rest in the assurance you are protected. So that's what we need to know you guys. You know, I I also feel like this is going to be a period of time where we're actually like overcoming maybe some fears that had limited our growth or potential in the past. When I also think about this energy, you know how I was talking about earlier about how it could also be like breaking through or destroying perhaps an illusion that we had been operating under, you know, to the same extent that it's also showing us what, what I'm trying to say is this is also going to show us the things, the fears that we've been fearing that are also not real. Okay. It goes both ways. So whereas some things may be presenting themselves in the energy that are kind of like too good to be true and are presenting themselves maybe as real, but maybe like inflated in some type of way, we're also going to come to discover in this energy that fears that we've sort of been like maybe even imagining that have maybe never been real, that have been holding us back or delaying like a process of growth or something that we needed to go through, maybe coming off or, you know, us being relieved from that somehow as we move through this period of time as well, which is leading to that accelerated phase of growth. So when we're dealing with the Neptune influence, you know, it can always, there's, there's, there's two ways that this can go. It's like, but it doesn't matter regardless of the, you know, the way that this energy is playing out there is an element of illusion or of fantasy or of like a dream or you know a hypnosis or something something that is not something that is clouding judgment or has been clouding judgment or has been distorting our perception to view reality clearly is really what it is so whether 
that is being applied as an overlay in terms of like the value and the stuff like that and the relationships perhaps or you know whatever the partnerships agreements all that type of stuff or whether we are awakening from a state that was dominated you know by some illusion or by some slumber or some you know like fabrication whatever uh either way we've got nothing to fear through the process and you guys we're protected. So that's just what we need to keep in mind. I'm going to stop talking now. Um, that's what I have to say. Uh, that's how I feel like our full moon and cancer is coming together this year. And, um, thank you guys for being here. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. You guys share it with your friends. If you think that they would enjoy this type of content as well, leave me comments, you guys. So grateful for you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, leave me comments. I really appreciate knowing what's going on with you guys. If you are having experiences that reflect what I'm talking about in these videos, let me know in my comment section below. It was super valuable to me. I really appreciate you guys. And if you want to know what's on this whiteboard, I post them in a Facebook group that I have that's linked in my description box below. Sorry, I haven't done that uh, like the past couple of days. I've had so much going on preparing for the holiday. Oh, and if you guys are watching this on Christmas, Merry Christmas, you guys, for those of you celebrating. Um, wanted to say that as well before I forgot because that is the day that this will come out. So anyways, uh, joy to the world, you guys. Um, wishing everybody the most blessed time out there. This is going to be, do not get me wrong, this is going to be a very blessed two-week lunar full moon cycle. So um, that's what I'm going to say and I will see you next time, you guys. Actually, I'm only putting out two videos this week. This is a weird video timing wise because it's like Tuesday into Wednesday. Usually I put out videos Monday, Wednesday and Friday, but this is like a Tuesday into Wednesday and I wanted to get it out for the full moon. And then this weekend, we also have some more energy Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Jupiter stationing direct and I need a video for that. Uh, and then there was just like Thursday being the random day this week. So I'm actually going to put out well this video is going out on monday and then my other one i may put it out on thursday morning so that'd be like wednesday night thursday morning um i may put out my next video since i'm only putting out two this week but it'll be thursday or friday so anyways now i'm going to stop talking and i will see you guys next time we'll be talking about jupiter direct uh, i love you guys and until next time bye